Welcome back to this new lecture of the online course on sustainable architecture and current lecture is on green building ratings and components. Continuing from the previous lecture where we discussed the process of creating sustainable buildings which synonymously we are calling as green buildings now though we very clearly understand that there is a clear difference between sustainable buildings and green buildings we from now on in this course will focus more on the process of delivering green buildings because that is more tangible and the parameters and components of green buildings are largely the environmental components which we have seen that they are more tangible easily quantifiable measured monitored verified and hence it is easy to assess and measure the performance of a building which needs to be qualified as a green building as compared to the sustainable building. So here we start with the green building ratings and their components. So just to give you an overview the green buildings usually they comprise of components which can be clubbed under one of these features and these five components are invariably present in green buildings. The first one being the site, second is water efficiency, third is energy and atmosphere, fourth is materials and resources and the last one being indoor environment quality. Now if we talk about the history of how green building rating programs across the world have been developed which comprise of all of these components which we just discussed giving different weightages to these components placing more emphasis on one component depending upon the context in which the green building rating program was developed we see that we have come a long way. So it all started in 1990 when for the first time BRIAM was launched in UK and from then in 1992 we have already seen that the Rio conference of United Nations happened and that was the same time when US Energy Star was launched. In 1993 US Green Building Council was formed US GBC. Further to that US Green Star Homes was launched but it was not a very successful program. However by this time BRIAM was doing reasonably good and uh, Almost the entire UK was following going ahead with BRIAM. In 1998 for the first time USGBC came up with LEED program which is one of the uh, most successful green building rating programs across the world along with BRIAM. So 8 years after BRIAM was launched the first green building rating program was launched eight years later. In 1999 further variations to the star rated programs from US came out. So earlier it was energy star only for homes and then it the new one was energy star office. In 2000 the second version of LEED came out. So that emphasized that the green buildings the practice itself is changing with time and hence the revised versions were required. In 2001 Japan created its own rating system which is CAS B and 2001 was the year when Indian Green Building Council was formed IGBC. IGBC was initiated in 2001 and that was the time when the first project first green building project of India was also started that is CII Sohrabji Center which is in Hyderabad. So this is the same year when green building movement in India actually started. So there were discussions, there were talks, we were still doing a lot of work as far as uh, climate responsive buildings is concerned. There were architects, stalwarts who were uh, making climate responsive, passively designed buildings, ecological buildings but formally the Indian Green Building Council was launched in 2001 which is an important year for us in India. 
In 2002, first Greenbelt conference was organized in United Nations and Canada GBC and World GBC was formed in 2002. So, we can see that a lot of momentum was uh, getting picked up from the first rating system coming up in 1990 and in 10 years several green building councils were formed, two, three more green building rating systems were launched. In 2003, Australia GBC was formed and the Green Star Rating Tool was launched. 2004, LEED launched the versions for existing buildings. So, so far it was only for the new construction NC, while in 2004 it was diversified and it was felt that existing buildings can also be converted into green buildings. So, that is where uh, we see a shift happening from new construction to existing buildings around 2004. 2005, Singapore Green Mark was launched. 2006, the Living Building Challenge was launched. 2007, German Sustainable Building Council DGNB was formed and the first US Green Globes certification came into uh, place. 2008 was the year which was the year when global financial crisis was uh, happening and that was also the year when BRIAM registrations crossed 1 million buildings and homes. So, this was happening 18 years after that but it established that across the world green buildings were happening, the green building movement was picking up. 2009, the new version of LEED and BRIAM International was launched. 2010, Green Globes ANSI standard was approved for new construction again and LEED existing buildings certification area in 2011, it overtook the new construction area. This was for, this was happening predominantly in the US and uh, in United States after the global financial crisis much more than the new construction, the existing buildings were uh, being retrofitted and renovated. So, the uh, potential buildings, the instead of new buildings were the existing buildings and that crossed the new building mark, new construction mark. So, this was again a shift, establishment of a shift. In 2012, National Green Building Standard was uh, created. In 2000. 13 US federal GSA accepted both LEED and Green Globes and the fourth version of LEED was launched. So, the improvisation improvements in the existing benchmarks were happening simultaneously. In 2014 LEED was being used in more than 140 countries, BRIAM was updated and a lot of new green building rating programs were added. By 2015, World GBC was present in more than 100 countries by 2015. In 2016, LEED version 4 was mandated in US and besides this, besides this journey where the development of rating programs across the world are shown, it is still not comprehensive. There are many, many more rating programs which are existing which were developed in different countries and are being practiced in those specific countries and also almost rest of the world. So, some of the green building councils and rating programs are these. So, we have USGBC, we have WGBC, we have Green Building Council of Australia, Emirates GBC, we have Green Building Council of Sri Lanka which is a relatively new one. We also have a new one Green Building Council of South Africa. We have Hong Kong GBC, we have Japan which is CASB and if we look at this particular uh, map, global map, we see that there are more than 30 different certification programs which are practicing across the world from LEED to Green Globes to BRIAM to CASB to Greenship, Lotus, Beam Plus, Green Star. Neighbors, Green Mark, IGBC, Griha is also there in India, which is missing from this particular uh, 
chart, we have DGNB. So, we have a lot of them and if we look at their impacts, impact areas across the world, we see that lead has quite large impact area in the globe and uh, there are other rating programs which were inspired or which have taken up from the lead and developed on their own. For example, IGBC in India uh, initially started on the same lines as USGBC and LEED and that is why this is this is shown in the red color because it is derived or it is taking from the LEED. Uh, there is also a large uh, area under the influence of BRIAM. We have CASB uh, here, we have Green Star which is predominantly uh, working in the countries uh, uh, of Australia and New Zealand and likewise. So, we have all these rating programs and almost the entire world is uh, going ahead with this green building movement. Almost all the countries now have their green building councils and their own rating programs. At least one or the other rating program is being used in the countries. Let us quickly go over each of these rating programs very quickly and see the emphasis which is being placed on different green building components, the broad categories which the first slide of today's presentation showed. So, BRIAM is the oldest one and it started from UK uh, and in 1990 as we just saw and now it is applicable in almost uh, the entire Europe and many other countries across the world. If we look at the credit distribution in BRIAM, we can see very clearly that the largest percentage of credit is taken up by the energy uh, indicator, energy uh, component and a large percentage of it also goes towards the waste and materials together which I can place together as resources, materials and resources. So, that, that is uh, together quite a significant percentage is also going towards uh, site. There is some proportion for innovation uh, as well and a reasonably significant part for management. So, it is quite a diverse thing, a diverse uh, distribution of the uh, credits, but this is the most recent version. When any of the rating system when it was initially started did not start with the same distribution. These distributions have been changing from country to country, from rating program to rating program. LEED is uh, very popular, it was developed by USGBC and uh, if we look at the credit distribution under LEED, we can see that a very large percentage is actually going towards energy which is 33 percent, one third of the total credits are actually earned if we focus on energy. And then a large percentage for materials, water and indoor environment quality. So, these three are also placed quite high. There is some credit for innovation, but not as much and uh, some credit to site as well. So, the highest is energy again. If you look at the LEED certification level, the buildings are certified and uh, once the buildings are certified, they are given certification level as platinum certified or gold certified or silver certified or just certified. So, platinum is highest and the total maximum points that a building can earn is 110 points. So, from 80 and above it is platinum certified which is often very difficult to achieve and uh, lesser than that is gold at uh, 60 to 79 points and then silver from 50 to 59. So, with its th this one is for lead. But we have this kind of certification level for all different uh, uh, rating programs. So, Pearl rating program is uh, for uh, Dubai and Abu Dhabi and it was uh, developed as part of uh, by Abu Dhabi Urban Planning Council as part of their sustainable development initiative. Here energy is even higher, it is closing in to around 50 percent, 44 percent precisely and water which makes a lot of sense because uh, Abu Dhabi and the Middle East is a very dry region, very dry area. So, very high emphasis is placed on water. So, so far we have seen that no other rating program has placed as much importance to water as 
this particular program and this is this is quite high. So, total 44 credits not this is not a percentage, but 44 credits approximately 30 percent is for energy and 30 percent is for uh, water and the rest 30 percent approximately is taking into account materials, indoor environment quality, site and innovation all. So, this is a very high uh, number which we are seeing as per and that is the uh, intent of this discussion where we see that different rating programs have different emphasis points. Green Star uh, is applicable in Australia and New Zealand and in, it assesses the sustainable design, construction and operation of buildings, fit outs and also communities. Here again we see that a lot of emphasis is on energy and there is a greater emphasis on materials and resources just like BREEAM as compared to water, innovation, site and management. So, if we look at the individual components energy and material they are given greater importance. If we look at GBI Malaysia which is applicable in Malaysia we again see a greater emphasis on energy. So, commonly we see that almost all the rating programs are placing greater emphasis on energy which also highlights the fact that energy crisis is there. We have less of energy, our energy demand is going on, going on increasing while our supply is still limited. We still have limited supply of energy resources. Hence, the green buildings must address the energy parameter, the energy component. All other components are still lower, but here in GBI Malaysia we see a lot of emphasis being placed on IEQ, indoor environment quality, which is also unlike other green building rating programs. So, a lot of emphasis is placed on indoor environment quality. So, this comparison between rating programs can uh, lead us to very interesting findings as to what is the common trend where the world is placing emphasis on and then the regional variations within these. Now, this BCA green mark is the rating system which is applicable in Singapore and we see again that a lot of emphasis on energy and indoor environment quality is being uh, placed. We also see that a lot of emphasis on innovation and site is being placed here, but very surprisingly not much of emphasis is on water while there is a lot of uh, crisis water crisis in Singapore. Now, that could also be due to the uh, national policies where water is being maintained managed and treated at the national level at the at the large scale and not at the building level. So, probably very less percentage here waste for the, so, so, the reflection of this green building rating system and the weightage to each component also reflects the national policies which are in place. So, where is the government wanting to place focus through the individual buildings towards uh, improving the environment. This green globes is applicable in US and Canada and we see that very large share is given to energy again energy, water and materials and also indoor environment quality. So, rest of the three site, waste and management they fare very low. So, energy uniformly somehow is very high on the agenda. This is edge buildings. Now, edge is very different from the rest of the rating programs. It is a rating program, but it does not evaluate the site, the uh, indoor environment quality, the innovation, management, none of those and it evaluates any building only on three basic criteria which is energy, water and materials. It does not give any star rating or any certification like that. It will only focus on the reduction in the consumption of energy, water and materials from the local baseline. So, edge is applicable for the entire world and if I have a building in India, so the baseline is 
from the Indian codes for example, ECBC may be for used for energy, for water we may have specific codes for materials, we may have uh, NBC and so on. So, only these three criteria where the minimum is 20 percent reduction has to be achieved from the baseline and that is what will enable you to have a certificate uh, to the building which is certified by EDGE. This was an overview of the rating systems from the world. Now, if we look at the green building rating systems which are prevalent in India, GRIHA is our indigenous rating program which was developed by uh, Terry and it is uh, adopted by the government of India. So, all the government of India buildings, public buildings are supposed to be certified uh, using GRIHA rating program. And the rating which is given by GRIHA is a star rating. So, from 1 star to 5 star the maximum number of points that we can achieve is 100 uh, which will help us to fetch a 5 star rating in GRIHA which is again a very uh, tough job. Uh, and with minimum 50 percent of points earned we can actually have a single star GRIHA rated building. GRIHA is very uh, much suited for Indian context because it places, it emphasizes on uh, the local needs of our country. We see that there is an, uh, there is a focus on energy, but more than energy we have a larger focus on management, where some of the indicators which are not discussed in any other rating program are seen. For example, providing basic amenities and healthy living conditions for the uh, workers, construction workers is incorporated providing basic amenities like toilets and uh, living quarters, crash for their children is all part of GRIHA rating program. Now, this is beyond green and it is taking it towards a sustainable building level where we are concerned about our workforce. Besides uh, the uh, regular point, this is a unique uh, point about uh, GRIHA. In other points there is, there are parameters like uh, water, materials, site which are given emphasis and uh, some on waste and pollution, innovation and uh, indoor environment quality. So, all these are also uh, there in GRIHA. On the same lines as we have discussed LEED, we have our uh, Indian Green Building Council IGBC which was formed with the help of USGBC. They helped form uh, IGBC in India and gradually IGBC has developed on its own. So, it started the first rating program of IGBC was IGBC new construction. Initially through IGBC we were practicing uh, LEED in India. So, the first green building in India was actually uh, LEED certified uh, building and uh, gradually IGBC has developed a lot of rating programs for different types of buildings, different types of built environment within India. If you look at the credit distribution again for the new construction, we see a lot of, it is very similar to what we find in LEED. So, a lot of emphasis on energy and uh, water and then site, indoor environment quality, there is emphasis on materials and innovation very similar to what we had uh, in uh, LEED. But gradually we have moved on and IGBC today has more than 20 rating programs for uh, our country which is largely applicable to our country. Now, starting from new buildings, existing buildings, they diversified to green homes. So, a house within that the kind of housing project, it could be apartment, it could be residential society, it could be individual home which can go and get themselves certified. Then they have for townships, they have for green villages, campuses, educational campuses like ours, cities, bigger cities, very uh, large cities also have uh, this uh, uh, rating program. Uh, which is applicable. Then for landscapes, affordable housing, health and well-being, there is one for interiors, for factories, schools, data center, healthcare, SEZ, existing cities, MRTS, almost a variety of built uh, environment is covered through different rating programs of IGBC. If we are going ahead, 
for designing any built environment which is certified we need to look at these rating programs and use the appropriate one for the kind of development we are intending to undertake. In addition to these two which is uh, GRIHA and IGBC rating programs we have our national building code and very recently a new chapter uh, a new part which is approach to sustainability was added to national building code as and this step has mainstreamed the sustainability the discussion about sustainability in the buildings arena. So far the rating programs which are voluntary in nature were being used to develop and design green buildings. Now on the code NBC is not a mandatory code it is a voluntary code but yet it very clearly states the procedure, the benchmarks, the guidelines for designing sustainable buildings. So, this part 11 approach to sustainability clearly outlines the criteria for designing and constructing sustainable buildings. If we do a quick comparison of strategies of uh, various rating programs successful uh, popular rating programs we can see that the strategies for achieving this green building certification through different indicators it may be achieved through different strategies they may be design strategies where we design the building in such a manner that it qualifies for a certain criteria. For example, uh, orienting the building correctly may result in energy uh, reduction, reduction in energy consumption. So, that is a design based indicator, design based criteria. There are certain indicators criteria which are met by deployment of advanced technology. For example, reduction in energy consumption through the use of high efficiency equipment for example, uh, the lighting fixtures which are going to be used are very high efficacy fixtures. So, they will help us in reducing the energy consumption same is for water. So, we might have certain indicators which may be achieved with the help of advanced technology. We may have indicators which can be fulfilled through a combination of design and technology both. So, with design and then we can either we can design or we can use technology to achieve a particular indicator. And the last one is management. So, how the building is being operated during construction, how it is being managed, how the waste is being managed, post occupancy, how the building is being managed. So, if we look at uh, the comparison of strategies, we see that across the world different green building rating programs place a greater emphasis on the technology. So, a lot of technological strategies, technology based strategies are used to certify and design and have high performance green buildings. However, through a course on sustainable architecture we advocate and we suggest that the first step should be to design the buildings correctly. So, a larger emphasis focus on designing the buildings correctly passively and then move on to complement them with the advanced technology to improve the performance. Now, besides these which is which is the ongoing trend there are new trends and mega trends. So, from green buildings certified green buildings we are now moving on to energy efficient buildings and net zero energy buildings. So, the world is now talking not only about buildings which consume optimum amount of energy or slightly less amount of energy we are talking about buildings which consume no energy at all or whatever energy they consume they are able to generate. So, no energy is being taken from the grid this is net zero energy buildings there are net zero water buildings there are buildings which are just net zero. So, we are talking about the existing buildings we are talking about cloud as IOT becomes popular we are talking about incorporating all these these things into our buildings we are talking through cloud we are talking about performance disclosure we are only talking about healthy buildings. So, these are different trends 
we are talking about solar power where renewable energy incorporation into built environment is being looked at and all these different trends are also being captured through different rating programs. So, so far what we have seen is different green building rating programs which cover more or less the same types of components and parameters. Now, couple of rating programs if we will see focus only on one of these mega trends uh, unlike the green building trend movement. So, if we start from India there is this ECBC energy conservation building code and the star rating for buildings which focuses only on the energy performance of the building. So, we have ECBC energy conservation building code for commercial buildings and a new one ECBC R is also out which is for residential buildings. On the basis of the performance which is specified through ECBC we have this green star uh, rating program for buildings where the EPI for each type of diff there are different categories of buildings for example, hospital buildings are there, there are hotel buildings, commercial buildings and the EPI for each building in different climates is specified. So, this is specific to energy uh, performance of the buildings. There is another certification which is well standard, well building standard and the larger focus of well building standard is on health, well being and indoor environment quality. So, there is no discussion on how the site is being developed, what kind of materials are being used if the materials have a focus on the quality of air the comfort, the light, nourishment. So, this is largely focusing on uh, the health, well-being and indoor environment quality. So, there is specific focus on uh, these uh, dimensions. There is uh, GRESB which assesses the environmental, social and governance performance of the real estate. So, we are not really looking at individual building, but we are looking at the infrastructure, we are looking at the real estate and uh, a larger portfolio uh, as such when we are looking at the GRESB uh, certification and this one is largely used by developers, large developer groups. There is uh, sites, sustainable sites initiative which is again looking at the sustainable and resilient land development uh, projects, sites uh, certification. We also have peer which is largely looking at the renewable energy uh, incorporation into the uh, existing programs. So, when we are talking about sustainable buildings and then focusing on to green buildings there is further diversification, there is further focus which is being placed on different aspects of uh, sustainable buildings or green buildings. If we look at this global map, we can see that energy codes are being implemented, they are being developed for different parts of the world. For example, what we just discussed about is ECBC which is for India, that is the energy code for India. So, we have ECBC in India. For rest of the world also there are different codes, energy codes which are being uh, developed. Some are mandated, some are in voluntary stage for example, in our own country, some are in mixed stages of uh, implementation partly mandatory, partly voluntary. In some cases, in our uh, case uh, for example, GRIHA is mandated for public buildings, but that is the green building rating program, but for energy codes also this is the same scenario. So, to uh, consolidate it all, uh, the rating programs which are as on date applicable in India are GRIHA, IGBC rating programs, LEED from USGBC, EDGE, we have ECBC which is a code which is uh, also being implemented through star rating programs of BEE and we have well building uh, program. So, I will conclude my lecture today with this discussion on green building uh, rating programs and the components. In the next lecture onwards, we will go on to elaborate the process of designing green buildings taking from the previous lecture and taking it to the next level where we detail out how to design, how to implement that process. Thank you for joining us, see you in the next lecture, thank you.